the sort of thing that happens here didn't seem to me like it's like that. That may by itself an appropriate answer, but still in front of this committee there is a question I, uh, to the extent that can be answered. You know, I, mean, I, 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 think, I think the question would be challenging to answer as yes or no, because with respect to, to discretionary curtailments for maintenance that can be, that, that have, that can be scheduled uh, or, or done sooner or later. The, the fact that PG&E <coughs> deliberately performs those during periods of time when the ISO would prefer them to happen rather than periods of time when the ISO would not prefer to happen, <coughs> happen would seem to be fine. Uh, the, if we were to start to see more routine curtailments purely for the purpose of meeting, you know, of, 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 of grid needs, then that would, that would be a different thing for sure, and we'd want to look at that carefully to make sure. We know that if you were to do that on a routine basis, there's a set of things that you'd likely want to modify in the plant uh, so that you could do it right. with less wear, tear, and stress, and to do it with, uh, with uh, appropriate levels of safety. Uh, Kerry, do you want to comment more? No, I, I think you characterized it uh, properly. Right. But this is certainly something that if we were to start to see any <clears throat> behaviors, any, any curtailments that were not for the purpose of performing some sort of maintenance, uh, then, then we should look at that very carefully. Yeah, I agree with that. And, and if it happens on a routine basis, one does need to make sure that you've gone through and made appropriate modifications. The plants in France have, some of the components have been modified or changed so that they can, they can perform these types of load falling maneuvers I agree on with that a regular too. basis with uh, uh, appropriate, uh, or while minimizing wear or tear stress on the plant. I agree with that. I'd, I'd like to better understand your question. <clears throat> Let me narrow it even <laughs> more. For, yeah, okay. And then my sub-question is, are you talking about any events on this page here? Not to my knowledge. Okay. okay. Let me narrow it to a prospective application to, to take out of the issue whether it's happened before or not. My concern is it's been authorized since October of 2014. Mm -hmm. And let me use the word overgeneration to narrow uh, the triggering events uh, which would motivate the short-term energy supply desk uh, to request a curtailment at the plant. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And let me specify that the prospective safety concern would be with respect to uh, the boric acid that would be added uh, for reactor chemistry purposes, and then the impact on uh, treatment requirements for radioactive water, uh, which ultimately, after treatment, would be discharged to the ocean. And the potential impact on uh, storage capacity for gaseous radioactive waste, were that to happen too frequently without plant modification. I understand the mm -hmm. point. Understand. You know, this is, I think. I understand that, the point, but you hadn't explained it until now. This, 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 is, this is interesting because these, these issues are at play even when you're, for, for, for reasons that relate to plant reliability mm -hmm. and safety, such as storm curtailments, reducing power temporarily at the plant. And I think it's worthwhile for us to have some understanding of how that's done. Uh, if it does involve changing boron concentrations instead of using control rods or whatever, this, this would be worthwhile for us to look at uh, uh, the, the practices uh, that one has during curtailment and what impact they might have on plant operation safety, waste generation, and things of that nature. We've looked at that. We know that you understand the systems. I know what you're talking about. I guess I would like to know more about is there a specific instance or two you know about where they voluntarily brought their plant down? It's my understanding that they are now authorized to do that oh. and that the trigger uh, is held by the short-term energy supply desk, not the ISO. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about non-emergency <clears throat> conditions. It's my understanding that they are the first PWR in the United States to attempt this. 
Uh, there is one other plant uh, that does load follow, which is the Columbia Generating Station, mm -hmm. uh, but it is a boiling water. And yeah, neither, but that's that, that's technically very different. Yeah, yes, I, it is because yeah. it's a BWR. Yes, I, it is. Yeah, I was curious because I've not heard of them pulling it down voluntary in the time we've been here. And I I think and the question prospectively would be <clears throat> why? Why is this a good idea if you're trying to balance? the grid, if you're trying to load follow and, and address grid issues, are there no other non-nuclear resources that can be utilized to do that more effectively mm -hmm. and arguably safer? Probably would be better, yeah. We'd like to know that too. So this is so, new, I think this is new to me. This, this and uh, yeah. be worth looking at because the plant to me is safest when it's operating 100% or at a steady level. And bringing it up and down uh, is a safety concern as well as all the processing you talked about. Sure. So I think that's worth looking at. So uh, we'll, we'll follow up on this <clears throat> to, to find out what the new policies are. If there's expectations that these policies are going to be exercised on any sort of routine basis. And then we'll also uh, review our, our previous studies on on the, the curtailments and what the safety implications are for the plant. So well, but but we have a obvious question we can ask at, at the start. I want you to imagine that some external somebody asked the plant to come down. Wouldn't you think that the plant management would? Um, pretty much have an absolute veto against that if they felt there was some safety concern with doing so? I'd hope so. Correct, but I would, I would be very surprised just as... I have no were, idea. <laughs> you don't veto the curtailments for the winter storms for safety. No, 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 that's forced. Right. But, but if it isn't forced, somebody calls up and the plant management <coughs> collectively needs to have an absolute um, override and say, no, we're, no, not not today. We've got a safety reason why not today. Oh, no. Well, certainly that would be the huh? case. Yeah, I hope that's the but case. But I, I think that would be the case. I hope and that's I, the case. I can't be more specific, I hope but let me say I have it on good information that some of the more experienced operators at the plant have expressed concern about this. Well, I understand, and let me, let me explain to the public what's going on. From time to time, a piece of equipment drops out for an hour or two. Mm -hmm. And the plant doesn't have to shut down because the tech specs say, for example, um, if that lasts for more than 12 hours, you've got to shut down. I mean, there are, there are tech specs like that. And some mm -hmm. tech specs are, say it's three days, and some tech specs say it's right away. But if that happens, that happens from time to time. Um, you want the plant to work as hard as they can to get that thing back, and it's still safe, and there's, none of us complain about this one thing, but nevertheless, you'd want it all there. Well, if when they were in the course of doing that and they ask them to curtail it, you might say, no, I don't want to do that. I don't have everything there, even though I'm still more or less okay. They need to have the power to have an absolute veto <coughs> over that and say, not now, and put the phone down. I agree. Because, because <coughs> their management and the rest of them together have an absolutely first responsibility to the safety of the plant. I agree. And none of that other nonsense can get in the way of it. So, so if that's, that's true, that's different than if there was some other arrangement. Good. That would really bother me if the other arrangement. Um, <laughs> let me say that we have an item in our open items list yes, that addresses that very topic, CO12. And the last time we looked at this was December of, 19, of uh, 2014. Right. And, and we next have no plans to third quarter of this year to look at it again. So that's an item we look at regularly, and we will look at it according to the schedule, and we'll ask that very question. So we, we, we will we will <coughs> investigate this new policy. And in general, our I think our position would be that that if curtailment is needed in the system, every other option should be exhausted before you curtail Diablo. And at that point it I think you're in the position of making the argument that it's a grid issue. Because if you a, can't, if you, if, but that's if, a different point, yeah. right? Yeah. But let's let this. This is something that is worthwhile for us to follow up on and understand better. Thanks for raising this. Thank you. Thank you. No, I'm, I'm glad you raised it. I hadn't until until three quarters of the way through that. I hadn't really understood what you were saying, and now I do. Okay. Thank you. Next comment. 